And I am back in the studio, functional, ready to go. It is right before Thanksgiving, and it's the Wednesday actually before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. I heard on Dave Smith's podcast, and that's why I want to talk to you guys about this stuff, because um, of the people I listen to, Dave Smith, Tom Woods, Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, um, other names as well. I mean, a lot of libertarian and, and original kind of Democrat, liberal types, original ones. Uh, they always bring up great points. And um, Smith had brought up uh, and played a clip from Bill Maher's show where Maher naturally missing the point, having completely flown the coop and taken the ticket and not being able to be what he used to be, uh, mentioned that uh, Trump supporters, we're talking the election 2020, Trump supporters were found predominantly in areas that are economically depressed and uh, areas that are wealthy, right? Think Upper West Side, Upper East Side, Manhattan, Silicon Valley, San Francisco area, that kind of thing. Uh, Northern Virginia, you have people voting for Biden. So uh, Dave's, Dave Smith's point, yeah, Dave, we're, we're tight. You know, Dave, he and I, you know, we're chatting. And um, so what, he, what, what Smith recognized right away, as did anybody who is able to think more than just Republicans bad, bad orange man bad, Republicans bad, and Democrats good on the side of the angels. If you're able to think past that for even five minutes, then you can pretty easily come up with the reason why the people in economically depressed areas went for Trump, and that's because of the lockdowns. I mean, it's so obvious that, you know, it's the first thing I thought of, like, okay, yeah, well, these people are being told they can't work. They have to work. They're not anywhere connected to or married to a hedge fund manager who can open up a multiple screened computer in the uh, spare room as a home office, and manage the hedge fund from uh, uh, 67 East 82nd Street or from uh, 12 West 96th Street. These are Manhattan addresses, swanky addresses. Go look at the real estate prices on those streets and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So... uh, you know, Dave Smith saw it right away where the lockdown people are hurting very badly. So they're going to say, well, you know, Biden has, was on record saying we need a national lockdown and a national mask mandate, which in a way I kind of hope he does it. In a way I hope he says it because then anybody who is into freedom and or Trump supporter, and or libertarian, and or original liberal will be like, you know, I just don't think the national lockdown thing makes sense. You know, the the poorer areas, uh, what we used to call the minority areas of the United States are going to get decimated even further. And the mask mandate, eventually they're going to say, you know what, you can't just force me to wear a mask when it really doesn't seem to, you know... I'm talking about thinking people. I'm not talking about the people around I, like where I live. I live in the Bronx, right? I live in a kind of a good area of the Bronx. Yes, they exist. And, you know, I, I'm surrounded by sheeple. These people, if they were told to wear a mask on their forehead, would do it. I mean, they would just do whatever they're told. But, like, real people wouldn't buy into that. They would see, like, well, you know what? This is getting a little creepy that you want me to wear a mask all the time. Do I have to wear a mask when I sleep? If not, why not? I might give my my spouse corona. So it's just really kind of weird. And so you have a complete and total disconnect. And what Smith does is, you know, he listens to the pundit on Mars show. There's some some lady who just can't understand why these people would vote for Trump in the bad neighborhoods. They're like, well, I guess my taxes are going to, I want my taxes to stay down. Like completely oblivious to what's going on in the world, which is why, you know, Mars show, which used to be wonderful. Uh, and, and, and now, I mean, he, he, along with all of corporate media, you can just ignore it. It's just, it's just pointless. They have no, 
they have no common sense. They don't know how regular people live. They don't have the first earthly clue as to what's going on with a regular working person. They're, they're completely in the dark. And um, <clears throat> which brings me to another quick point before I bring this to school stuff is you also notice that the swing states of Florida and Texas, nobody, nobody is talking about those at all. They were supposed to be close. They were supposed to be up for grabs. And especially Texas, which has a high uh, Hispanic population, particularly Mexican. And Florida, which has a whole influx of people from all over the states, particularly New York, and a pretty good-sized Hispanic population as well. Uh, Those states went for Trump, and it wasn't even very close. So... um, you should also know that Dominion software was not used in those states. So Trump's case, and I think he has a good case. I'm at right now. I'm seventy percent. I'm on the record on here, November twenty fourth. I think it is or third. Um, I'm saying uh, Trump takes the oath of office seventy percent chance in January. The fraud was so ridiculous, but I'm not talking about that stuff now, right? So. 25, right? November 25th. I say 70-30 Trump takes the oath in January. Um, So, but Florida, no, you know, so disconnected to America? Yeah, right? Florida, up for grabs. Texas, up for grabs. Hispanic people just vote and black people just vote for Democrats because they get it. They they understand that the Democrats are looking out for the little guy. Eh, Not so much. And that's why... You know, if it's a story and it's not this liberal narrative, progressive globalist agenda, if if it doesn't fit that narrative, you're not going to hear about it, which is why you've heard absolutely nothing about Florida and Texas. It's why you've heard absolutely nothing about Sweden and the lockdowns and no or the Sweden and the no lockdown, no mask, open school country of Sweden. It's obviously going very well because if people were dying in the streets, CNN would be covering it. It would be on the cover of the New York Times, but it's not. Things are going great in Sweden. They've it probably, well, it looks like achieved herd immunity and so you don't hear about it. And so voting records, the way people act, what they're worried about, things that are going on in the world are not known to our overlords and they're certainly not known to the corporate press. So... That brings me to my last point, which is you have, uh, we are still remote. We've had kindergarten through third graders in the buildings in my district since uh, November 5th, I think, right around there, 7th, somewhere around there. A good two and a half weeks. We have, uh, when we come back on Monday, today's Wednesday, we come back on Monday after Thanksgiving, we have 4th through 8th grade coming into the buildings, and then December 14th, we're supposed to have uh, high school students. So that's still the plan. Um, The wretched effects of remote learning are in full effect. Let me tell you, um, attendance is and especially with our most at-risk and at-need students, attendance is terrible. So all the bad things that are going on in a district like mine are exacerbated and exponentially worse. So attendance is wretched. So we know we have attendance issues, and of course with our at-risk students and our most disaffected and and somewhat a wayward students it's worse it's now way doubly worse triply worse so attendance is very low i don't know if my students are retaining any information i don't know if they do any of their own work i don't know what they're learning i get very little feedback i don't see very many faces they suggested we should sort of, kind of make them turn on their cameras and Zoom, but I'm in a bad neighborhood, right? I'm in Mount Vernon, New York. It's a, it's a, it's. I enjoy working there. I'm, I'm not bashing Mount Vernon at all, but we're at an at-risk population, and some of our students live rough, and so they don't want to turn on their cameras. Some of these students, so they're not happy about having someone poking in their where they live and what it's like. So I don't, I've never said you have to turn on your camera. Um, 
So I don't know what people's voices sound like. I don't know, except for very few. I know very few faces. I don't know what they want to do with their lives. I have no idea of their interests. I don't know what they um, are passionate about. I don't know who my artists are. I don't know who my readers are. I don't know the people who I can reach. I speak fluently. I speak fluent sports. I speak fluent comic book. And I speak fluent conspiracy theory. I'm very good at all three of those languages. It's barely had an effect. The couple of students, because they see the background of my classroom with the comic book posters and stuff, uh, Daredevil, X-Men, Fantastic Four, stuff like that, uh, DC covers, uh, they mention that they like the way the room looks, and then uh, some students are into anime, and they mention that. They're tangentially related, but a select few. I mean, I have... Oh, I don't know. This year, I probably have 80 students, something like that. And seven, eight, a tenth. Do I have any connectivity with those kinds of things? I have no idea who's into sports. And I'm in one of the best basketball schools in New York State. And um, I, I don't know who my sports people are. So it's, you know, that the article that I've linked to a few times, um, The Students Left Behind by Remote Learning, that article, multiply it by 30, probably, for just my roster. That's what you get. We have 18 people in the English department. Add another 30 times 18. It's just my school. We haven't talked about the other two or two high schools in my district. Or the I think about the lowest performing five or six high schools in Yonkers. going to be the same thing. South Bronx. It is a disaster. And I think it's becoming somewhat regular knowledge that this is the case. The weird part is we are still at the stage where people can just say, yeah, but people are dying of COVID. COVID. So we have to have lockdowns and we have to close the schools. Well, suicide rates are skyrocketing. Disaffection is skyrocketing. Attendance Uh, Lack of attendance is skyrocketing. Grades are, I mean, we're, we're, they are almost telling us to just pass students at this stage. Now, teachers aren't doing it. Teachers have pride too. They're not just give away. Do I have a class? Just put a name on the list in in June and put, you know, 80 just next to everyone's name. If you're going to do that, why bother having a class at all? Just pass people. Just give them the credit. So it's it's so wretched. It is so wild. And, the, and and what's wild about it is all you have to do with some people. Oh, hey, COVID. Yeah, but COVID. We can have students. We co- put on a mask. People people are dying out here. Look at our imbecile governor, with the the those uh, Hasidic Jewish people had the birthday party in secret, maskless for their rabbi. What did Cuomo say? It's about my safety, right? <laughs> it's about my safety too, right? Oh, I'm a martyr. I'm a victim. It's so bad. And you know, people are really, um, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be the after effects of this one. And I don't know. I mean, the end game, of course, is what it always is with the controllers. They want more control. They don't like it that you can just get on a plane and fly to Cusco, Peru. They don't like that. Okay, get a passport. Go fly if you can afford it. No, no, no. You might have COVID, so now you cannot fly. You have to get a test that says you don't have it, and the test is so sensitive and so unreliable that we can now... That's now just another percentage of people they can control, which is all they want. And um, I was talking with some people while shopping today, and... They're wondering, like me, they were wondering where everybody is. And these are not wealthy people where I was talking to. I was in the Bronx on Arthur Avenue by 187th Street at the fish market. And people are, are if, unfortunately, too few people are, are thinking clearly on this one. But to wrap it up in terms of school, right, we have, um, it's, it's bad. It's uh, all the things, and school is... 
a exceedingly flawed institution. I'm not pushing for school. I, th- I think homeschooling and independent work is a much more effective way, especially now. But um, I'll leave you with this. Um, things like hunger are skyrocketing. And here's how it used to work, right? I'd, I'd see some students very quietly would come into the building in the morning and we had a little kiosk for breakfast for students. And it's, you know, it's not great. It's a sugary muffin, maybe a piece of fruit and a thing of juice, right? So it's sugary juice. It's apple juice or something. But there were students where that was what they came in to eat. That's what they, they, <laughs> that was their breakfast. And now they've changed it where there's a food pantry at one of the schools. And so these quiet students who a lot of them were kind of, you know, not scared or nervous or anything, but, you know, they're going there to, to get something to eat. They, they had, hadn't had anything to eat that morning. And they would come in exit three where the kiosk was and they would quietly get something to eat. Well, now that we don't have that, so we have a food pantry at one of the high, one of the schools, the grade schools in the center of town. And now everybody knows who goes to the food pantry. You know, like people have pride. They have to, they have to go to Graham School or to Pennington or one of the other. I think it's Graham. I'm not sure. I get the emails. But if you have to go, all go to a central location to pick up the food that they're giving away and now it's a big thing now everybody can see you and it's just all out in the open and that you need to get a handout and most people are kind of ashamed of doing that they don't like it and so the students that could quiet and we have 14 year olds we have 18 year olds you know that we could boys and girls they could come in and grab something in the morning and and eat a muffin and um, I'd urge them to eat the fruit and too, you know, it's good for you. But now it's it's all it's all it's all because of the COVID, right? We're going to ruin people's lives because of the COVID and coronavirus can kill you. And don't you understand? People are dying out here. It's so sick. The level of depravity has reached such a level uh, from the people at the top, and shame on the regular people who just drink it down. Enough is enough. And um, my co-teacher, on, to end on this point, my, my co-teacher in the, with the at, very at-risk students, I, I work after school in a program where we work with the students that are most at risk. They've, they're older. They have no credits or few. They're barely, they, they probably won't finish. I, I have terrible attendance. I have 40 students in this program. and I, 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 Do I have 10 regulars? Uh, maybe. It's really terrible. They're not going to, these students are not going to get their high school diplomas. Um, But people are dying out there, right? The COVID, we can't have them come into the building. We have to lock down. What's the matter with you people? Uh, But uh, anyway, so um, those, you know, the the at risk students uh, that I work with, you know, my co teacher, gives away he works for a a uh, a charity where they give away food uh some of it prepackaged and some of it just you know fruit and 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 greens and stuff and you know whole chickens and th- all of that kind of thing and they're busier than ever e- this guy burns his saturday every saturday in town f- giving away free food for from the charity that he works for um, I don't. I don't know if he gets paid. I, I'm not sure, but they're they are busy giving food to families, and and most, well, all the ones he's mentioned are are happy to get it. They're like, oh, thank you. This is great. You know, they got chicken and a Salisbury steak. You know, stuff that you can package, stuff that you can put in a tray. So I'm rambling a little bit, but it's really disheartening, and. Um, Maybe anyone who hears this, maybe you tell somebody, you know what, the lockdown thing has run its course. It's economically so wretched that the after effects are so abysmal that it's now, again, a level of depravity. These are depraved individuals who just arbitrarily say, yeah, let's lock down. Yeah, and, and the people who are okay with it are wealthy. It's, a, it's, it's something that the affluent can survive and the poor cannot. So stop 
helping these people out. Go against the lockdowns, do a post on social media, tell people that enough is enough, and take some blowback on social media. Get yourself banned from Twitter if you have to. Right? The Great Barrington Declaration. Whatever. Stop helping these people out. They're hurting the people that you purport on social media while you're status jockeying and virtue signaling. The people that you say you care for. Black Lives Matter? Really? If you're saying Black Lives Matter and you're saying we need to lock down because of the COVID, then to the you, Black Lives don't matter. And neither do poor lives matter or immigrant lives. They don't matter to you either because those areas are getting decimated. And I see it up close every day. So enough is enough. Do something. Say something to someone. Change one mind. That's it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Class is no longer in session.